What's up, people? It's your boy, Nightface, bringing you my top 50 comic book film slash superhero films of all time. That's right. It took me a while, but managed to put together this epic list of 50. That's right. I picked 50 superhero-related films or comic book film adaptations. It could be any movie. It doesn't have to be necessarily Marvel or DC. It could be Dark Horse Comics. It could be just, you know, a superhero film in general that was just originally created. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> a lot of interesting choices here. Um, I got them all right here. My God, <laughs> this, this list took a while. It was pretty hard, but I'm feeling pretty confident. I managed to organize it, put it together how I see it best. And I'm ranking them. So, uh, yeah, let's get started, guys. I'm just going to fly through these as quickly as I can, trying to keep it under the 25-minute mark. So let's cross our fingers. Boom, here we go. All right, number 50, kind of controversial, but fuck it, is Sin City, A Damn to Kill For. Um, this film doesn't get a lot of recognition, and I thought it was pretty damn good. Uh, not the best sequel. I, I understand it's pretty forgettable, not that memorable, but still uh, worth a second watch. I do like all the actors here, especially Joseph Gordon-Levitt's story. Story was originally composed, and it's the most intriguing and most memorable. I didn't like uh, Jessica Alba's uh, Nancy's too much. That was the weakest one, in my opinion. And uh, it was a joy to see Mickey Rourke come back as Marv. And yeah, he even enjoyed the uh, A Dame to Kill for storyline. Uh, that's the main uh, thing about this film. That's the main story. Ava Green was so, woo, I love me some Ava Green. She was, she was nice. She was very devilish as a femme fatale here. But uh, yeah, Sun City, a dame to kill for. I love the steel book, by the way. So it's number 50. All right, number 49 is Constantine. Can you read Constantine? This film doesn't get a lot of love either. And it's like a guilty pleasure, just like a dame to kill for. I had to put it on the list. I really enjoyed Canary Reeves' portrayal. Um, you know, it's just this chain smoking, demon killing badass. And uh, Rachel Wise is in this film. And just arresting visuals. I mean, the visuals here just blew me away. Um, yeah, really like this one. It's very underrated. Um, definitely worth a second watch, in my opinion. That's Constantine. All right, so uh, number 48, we got the Thomas Jane. Punisher, which I really enjoyed, and uh, I can't wait to see the Netflix Punisher series, but man, uh, um, Thomas Jane did an amazing job. Uh, I like Donald Travolta as the villain. Uh, very good um, Punisher film, not the best, but still very enjoyable, just badass, brutal. Not as much punishing as I wanted, but still very good and uh, very overlooked. So yeah, the Punisher here. I got some of these in the in like triple packs or five packs, but yeah, anyway. Punisher moving on. We got number 47. That is The Wolverine. James Mangle, The Wolverine. And I love the steelbook, by the way. Look at that. Just bam. Yeah, just, um, I really enjoyed this one, but that third act, oh man, it's hard to get through the third act because it just gets so cartoony and just. I just did not like Silver Samurai at all. It, was, it just felt so... It felt like a different movie. Like, James Mangold even said so himself, the director of this film, who directed Logan, which we all love and I really like. But, yeah, um, he even said it that his original vision was just all the whole uh, Japan storyline and not, you know, integrating that silly Silver Samurai sequence with that lizard girl. It was just... It was pretentious, it was just stupid, and just it just killed the whole vibe of the film. But other than that, the flashback sequence with uh, Hiroshima in Nagasaki, I think. Yeah, um, the atomic bomb, that was amazing. And yeah, it just sucks that it fell flat in the end. I mean, look at that steel book. Look at that epic shot. Just warring, fighting ninjas, that's all we wanted. So, yeah, 47, number 47. Okay, number 46. I don't have it in my collection, but you'll see it right here. Boom. Hellboy. Ron Perlman was great as Hellboy. I mean, 
Guillermo del Toro really brought his own unique sense of style and vision and really made me fascinated with this uh, comic book character that I knew nothing about. And uh, it'll be interesting to see David Harbour play Hellboy in the new uh, remake or whatever adaptation, the new one. But yeah, man, uh, Ron Perlman's Hellboy, man, I really enjoyed this one. I also like the Selma Blair, his love interest, and Doug Jones, uh, Amy Sabian, I believe. Yeah, just cool uh, character designs, creature designs, just amazing. So yeah, let's move on. Number 45, another one that I don't have is uh, Superman, the uh, original 1978 Superman uh, with Christopher Reeves. I really appreciate this film, but I do feel it's kind of dated. And I'm not the biggest uh, Superman fan. That's just me, you know. You know who I like, people. Come on. It's all, it's all about Batman. But anyway, I still do appreciate this uh, classic. It is a classic. A lot of people will put it at their top 10 or top 20. And I totally understand, you know. But, uh, yeah, I, I do respect this film. And Gene Hackman as Lex Luthor was great. So, uh, yeah. So, the original Superman, number 40. Okay, number 44, I do have this one, <laughs> is X-Men, in a cool little metal pack. Um, this came out in 2000, and it's really one of the very first um, superhero films, comic book films that just, wow, just blew my mind. Visual effects, the cast was great. Uh, Hugh Jackman at his prime. You got Rebecca Romaine as Mystique. You got um, Patrick Stewart, great as... Professor X, well casted. Um, you got Ian McKellen as uh, Magneto. Just, oh my god, just a, an amazing cast. Just show you the inside real quick. I really like these metal packs. I know a lot of people don't like them, but I really like them. That uh, fight sequence on the Statue of Liberty. What? It just, <laughs> as a kid, seeing that, it was everything, you know, except for that cringy line by Halle Berry. You know what happens to a toad to get struck by lightning? Ugh. Anyway, moving on. Okay, so it's 44. Number 43 is Blade. I got this triple feature here, but I'm talking about Blade 1. Blade 1 with Steven Dorff as the villain. <laughs> oh, man. Wesley Snipes really killed that. I would love to see a Blade remake, honestly. Uh, I think Wesley Snipes is too old. Uh, maybe somebody new. Uh, I can't really think of anybody. Uh, Oh, what about that guy from, um, God, what was the, Get Out. The actor from Get Out would be an awesome Blade. It just occurred to me. Yo, make that happen. Anyway, uh, Blade <laughs> with uh, Wesley Snipes just killing vampires. What? It just blew me away when I first saw it because I never knew there was a Marvel comics about a badass vampire slayer. Just I was like, what? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Blade was cool. That's uh, number 43. Number 42 is Chronicle. Uh, this is a great found footage. One of my favorite found footage uh, films about these uh, high school teenagers and they, they get powers. And I just really like that. It's like a coming of age story. And it had a lot of um, symbolisms to Akira. Have you ever seen that amazing anime film? It had a lot of story elements from that. So it was heavily inspired by Akira. Oh, my God. But, uh, yeah, just the actor. Michael B. Jordan was amazing here. And that kid, what's his name? Oh, God, I can't think of this guy's name. But uh, good actor. Probably my favorite performance uh, in this film. Just amazing to see this. A superhero film is so unique in a found footage genre. You never would have thought. Yeah, so Chronicle. Yeah, anyway, moving on. Uh, Wanted. <laughs> Here it is. At number 41, Wanted. Uh, yeah, this is based off a graphic novel, actually. Uh, yeah, man, look at this deal book. Look, Angelina Jolie. What? Just, uh, what a badass. Oh, my God, this film is so... Uh, if you can get past that, you can curb bullets, then you'll enjoy the fuck out of this movie. Uh, we got James McAvoy. Yes, that's right, the young Professor X in this film. Just a great, badass film. I mean... Great, like, shoot 'em up style. Um, just so unique. And uh, I love the visual effects. I really like Angelina Jolie in this role. She's just a badass. Um, yeah, I really like this one a lot. Wanted. All right. 
Moving on, moving on. We got number 40, Cat America, the first Avenger. Uh, I really like the World War II setting here. And, you know, Cap, I wanted to see Cap in, in a live action film. We got to see him. And no, the 1990 piece of crap don't count. <laughs> but yeah, Chris Evans. Uh, you know, the only thing that bothered me was the CGI. They had the CGI uh, Chris Evans as a scrawny, skinny little kid or whatever. It looked weird. But yeah, it was a great cast. Um, uh, Peggy Carter was a great love interest and a badass. Alma Jones was cool. Uh, Sebastian Stan as Bucky was great. Uh, yeah, man. Just, man, with Red Skull. Red Skull was underutilized. I thought we would see him come back. Hugo Weaving or Red Skull is very underrated, in my opinion. But uh, still, yeah, strong addition to the uh, MCU universe. So, yeah. All right. Moving on. Another MCU film. Uh, number, wait, wait. Oh, jumping ahead of myself. I almost screwed up. Number 39. Sorry. Number 39. I don't have this one either. Hellboy 2, The Golden Army. Uh, really got to get those Hellboy movies. Um, yeah, but I'm looking for a special edition for the second one. I know there's a lenticular still cover. But man, this is just at the ante. Guillermo del Toro got even more creative with this one. I just I love his gun. He has like this insane like like five shot like cannon. I, I don't even know how to describe it. It was so badass we took on that creature. Like, oh man, this film was so good. Oh man, I really want to get my hands on those two movies, uh, Hellboy and Hellboy 2. Like Guillermo del Toro, I really love that director. I love his visionary style. You know, I love Pan's Labyrinth. So yeah, I just I hope this new Hellboy is just as good as the um, originals. You know, with Ron Perlman. Man. Ron Perlman, just just great, just great as Hellboy. That's what, what else can you say? Anyway, now we're moving on to number thirty-eight, and that's Age of Ultron. I do have that one. Um, yeah, this movie gets a lot of hate, but Still rewatchable, still a lot of fun. Um, yeah, Ultron was a letdown in my opinion. It was so promising because James Spader was uh, menacing in The Blacklist. It was a great TV show. And uh, yeah, they made him too gimmicky, trying to shoot off uh, quippy one-liners. It, it didn't really work for me. But uh, it's, it's still great to see the Avengers come together and... Uh, you know, Black Widow and the Hulk relationship. What the hell? The sun's getting real low, big guy. <laughs> you know, but um, yeah, still some fun to be had. I mean, yeah, just to shut your brain off and watch this movie. And Vision, man, man, he was so OP. Just the most OP. Uh, I can't wait for Thanos to kill him. Sorry, <laughs> just too overpowered. Anyway, moving on. We got uh, number 37. We got Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Uh, really enjoyed this one. Not as strong as the original, in my opinion. They got so jokey with this one. Just joke after joke after joke. I mean, you couldn't even fucking uh, breathe. <laughs> Everything was uh, like a one big extended long take of jokes. Non-stop jokes. But, I mean, I still liked it. And Drax was so hilarious. She just told everyone, your tape is talking secrets. You must be so embarrassed. <laughs> I love that. Uh, yeah. I like, uh, what's that girl's name that puts people to sleep? Uh, I like her addition to the cast. And Kurt Russell, what? Playing Star Lord's dad was just a joy to watch. I love Kurt Russell. He's great. I like him ever since The Thing. John Carpenter's The Thing. But yeah. You got Baby Groot, you know, who's adorable. And uh, more Rocket being a badass. And Michael Rooker really stole the show. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, what happened to him in the end really got to me, surprisingly. It was so emotionally touching. But anyway, Guardians of uh, Galaxy Volume 2. All right. Just looking at the list right here, guys. All right. Number 36. We got Blade 2. Sorry. Blade 2. Don't look at this one. This does not exist. Blade Trinity. Sh the, the, no. <laughs> Blade 2. Gilmore, uh, Gilmore Toro directed uh, Blade 2. And I think that's why I like it. More than the original. I mean, I like that vampire they had to fight that was just so different. Like, his mouth open. Like, the fucking predator in a way. It was weird. It was crazy, though. Um, really enjoyed that one. And the fight scene in the end was so badass. So gory. Oh, man. Just cool. Um, Norman Reedus is in this? The fucking Daryl from The Walking Dead is in this. Watch that. F watch this film alone just to see what happens to Daryl. <laughs> You'll be surprised. It's like, bam. Anyway. 
Moving on, we got number 35, and that is Spider-Man, the original Sam Raimi Spider-Man. Man, I mean, Tobey Maguire blew me away. Willem Dafoe is the Green Goblin. What? One of the most underrated villains, and just, yeah, he, he got a little over the top, kind of like almost Nicolas Cage territory. Well, nah, that's too far gone, but anyway, almost in a way, but still, oh my god, this film, and Jane Jonah Jameson, Parker, get over here! <laughs> just hilarious. Uh, J.K. Simmons was well cast as J. Jonah Jameson. Uh, Kirsten Dunst was fine. She was okay. Um, that rain sequence, though, you see right here? Uh huh. Spidey get a little, little upside down, uh, web slinging action there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Spider Man won. And uh, moving on, moving on. We got number 34, Man of Steel. Surprise, right? Oh, I made it on the list. Yeah, actually, I enjoy it. Um, the more I think about it, the more I watch it, the more I enjoyed it. Despite its flaws, it's not as flawed as Suicide Squad or BVS. No, it's not. And this is my ideal Superman film, believe it or not. Um, Henry Cavill did a good job uh, with the performance. Um, yeah, and Michael Shannon Azad was great. Uh, Kevin Co uh, Cosner playing his uh, uh, foster father, man, was just amazing. Russell Crowe, too, as uh, Jor-El. Just crept on like that opening sequence. Crept on just wow. Zack Snyder has an amazing visual eye, so you know can't talk shit about the man. He does have an amazing visual eye. He really captured it here in Man of Steel. And I like uh, that one chick uh, that was with Zod. She was a badass man. She was tearing the humans up. So uh, yeah, Man of Steel in 3D coming at you. So that's uh, number 34. Okay. Number 33, I don't have, and that will be, <laughs> bam, it'll be right here, uh, Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange, anyway, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch was great in this role, um, I think I give this movie too much shit, mainly because the villain, such a letdown, I had such high hopes, because I loved uh, the actor, Mads Mikkelsen, and uh, he was so underutilized, and I just came up watching Hannibal, it was an amazing TV series starring that actor, and just I knew he could, he should have been a more memorable villain, but he was just a throwaway villain you didn't give a shit about. And they really forced the humor here. Uh, you know, this deals with dark magical powers and sorcery and dimensions. And don't get me wrong, the visuals are like, <gasps> but the humor didn't really mesh well with this film. That's all. That's my biggest gripe about Doctor Strange, and I do want to get it on uh, Blu-ray, 3D. Anyway, um, yeah, so moving on, we got number 32, Batman. Hey, I'm Batman. You know, Michael Keaton is Batman. Just just classic. Uh, Tim Burton, I like what he did with, the, with it. Like, it's almost like a mobster, Great Depression era setting film. Just really like what he did with it. Um, yeah, and uh, Jack was uh, pretty good as uh, Joker. So I like this Digibook, by the way. Anyway, uh, moving on. Moving on, moving on. I got the other stack here. For damn, 18 minutes. Oh, this is gonna go over 30 or 40. I already know. Whew, I'm trying. I'm trying, guys. I'm trying to move along quickly. So, um, okay, number 31 is Kick Ass, as you can see right there. Kick Ass. Hi guys, I'm Kick Ass. <laughs> uh, Nicholas Cage was uh, great here, by the way. Chloe Grace Moretz was great as Hit Girl. Really stole the show. I mean, the violence, holy crap, was insane. Uh, you got McLovin here as well. Just interesting take on the superhero film. It almost feels like a superhero parody film in a way. But I, I loved it, especially the action sequence at the end where Kit Kaz was on the jetpack with those those mini guns. He's like, ah, just tore up that, <laughs> that entire building. And then he blew this dude away with a fucking rocket launcher. Like, oh my god, this this film is so over the top with the violence, but I love it. Oh my god, I love it. And Nicolas Cage, oh my god, it was tragic what happened to this character in this film. But uh, yeah, kick ass. Um, it's number thirty one and number thirty here. Finally get to the top thirty. Ant Man. Yeah, Paul Rudd surprised the hell out of me. I mean, Marvel just does great casting. And, uh, yeah, I heard Edward Wright was supposed to be the director, but it didn't work out, and then they got this other guy, um, 
fuck. I don't know. Peyton Reed was still, oh my god, so enjoyable. Michael Douglas, where the hell has this guy been? I was so happy to see him in this film, and who knew Michael Douglas um, could lend some comedic humor? Like, it was great. I like his daughter. Can't wait for Ant Man and the Wasp. It's going to be so good. Really enjoyed this. I like that it was a heist film. It felt so grounded, and just, I really had so much fun with this one. So, Ant Man and Wasp. Oh, can't wait. And that's Ant Man at number 30. All right, moving on, moving on. We got number 29, Batman Returns. Look at that. Bam. Look at that. See, look. Anyway, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. Woo, meow. Oh, God, that was cringe. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, she is so good as Catwoman. She's my ideal Catwoman right here. Danny DeVito is the Penguin. Come on. Who else would have played the fucking Penguin, you know? And, um, yeah, Michael Keaton was Batman. Come on. And uh, Tim Burton was just let loose here. Like, really. He's like, fuck it. It's gonna, you're just going to jump into my brain, my gothic crazy insane brain that's where gotham city is going to be filmed right in there <laughs> so uh batman returns uh i really like the christmas setting in that film by the way that was pretty cool all right number 28 is x-men first class really enjoyed this it's so refreshing to watch the younger cast you got james mcavoy as uh professor x was so interesting never seen that side of professor x but <laughs> The MVP here is Michael Fassbender as Magneto. My God, what a powerhouse performance, especially in the end when he just stops those fucking nukes. Like, uh-uh, and sends it back to them. Oh, my gosh. I was on Magneto's side all the way, like, you know, the brotherhood. Yes. Man, this, this film was so surprising when it came out. I was so skeptical, like, when I first watched it, and I ended up loving it, man. Look at this. Just, oh man, I love the steel book. And Kevin Bacon as, as the bad guy? <laughs> what? Kevin Bacon was great as the as the villain. And I, I love Magneto's um, flashback. Oh, my God. I love how that they use original footage from the original X-Men because they had the same flashback sequence. And, oh, my God. It just, it just incorporated it so well here. It was edited so well. So X-Men first class and number 28. All right. Let's keep moving, people. Uh, number 27, uh, <laughs> yeah, it might be a little controversial pick, but it's superhero related, so I picked it, and it's from M. Night Shyamalan, Dong, Unbreakable, oh man, what, so underrated, uh, just, this is the most realistic take of a superhero film, it's like you're watching a superhero film documentary or something, it's, it feels so grounded, so real, so personal, um, Bruce Willis and Sam Jackson give the performances of their career. Like, seriously, and I can't wait for Glass. Oh, my God. Split was amazing, and I can't I can't believe you're tying that all in. Like, that my shot on. Finally, you're using your ding-dong. Anyway, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> anyway, Unbreakable, man. If you haven't seen this film, watch it, man. You will be pleasantly surprised. My favorite and my shot on. I, I like this more than Sixth Sense and Science. So, yeah. All right, guys, we're moving along. We're moving along. Number 26. We got 300. This is a shitty webcam. I hate it when my webcam does that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'm not as focused. All right, 300. Nice steel book. Oh, man, just Gerald Butler. What is happening to you? You used to be a good actor, and you're on the shitty film. Stop picking films like fucking Geostorm, man, and just... Come on, you know, like, you're such a badass. Look, 300, fucking Zack Snyder is just, oh, my God. It was just the most manly man film, most testosterone-driven film ever. And the visuals are, like, fucking mind-blowing. Oh, my God. Really enjoy that one. That's, that one, everybody loves that movie. Everybody loves 300. Anyway, moving on, moving on. We got number 25. Oh, we reached the top 25 people. And what better movie to start off with than Dread, the most underrated uh, comic book film. Please don't watch the Stallone, the Judge Dread. Don't watch that piece of shit. Watch this one, Carl Urban. I hope they make the Dread TV series that I keep hearing rumors about. Please let that happen. Please bring back Carl Urban because it was badass. This is like the raid in just comic book glory, pretty much, <laughs> and I love the Raid movies, oh my god, 
But um, yeah. Oh my god. I saw this in 3D and I was like, what? This fucking blew my mind. That a drug, that slow mo drug, man. I felt like I was on that shit watching this. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> moving on, moving on. Uh, number 24. Number 24. We got a animated film. Yes. You will see animated uh, comic book films here. And that is uh, Batman Under the Red Hood. My God. They really got this right, people. And just has so much emotional weight. Especially towards the end with uh, Red Hood, with um, Jason Todd, Batman, the Joker. Just, man, I really enjoyed this one a lot. That's number 24. All right, number 23, Spider-Man Homecoming. What? I love this digibook. It just, like, opens up Spidey's uh, scribblings and whatnot. Uh, yeah. And I like how uh, Iron Man was in overblown in this film. <laughs> Tom Holland really had big uh, shoes to fill, and he stepped into this role beautifully. You know, so yeah, I was, I'm glad. I was glad to see uh, Tom Holland uh, excel from Tobey Maguire, and I and I can't wait to see him in Avengers: uh, Infinity War, and then the other Homecoming two sequel. And no, I don't count Amazing Spider-Man. Fuck that movie. Seriously, fuck that movie. Fucking hate it. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, Spider-Man Homecoming, oh, pleasant surprise, Vulture, Rob Keaton as the Vulture, oh my god, one of the most fleshed out MCU villains, one of my favorite MCU villains, uh, yeah, so, just a ton of fun to watch, alright, where are we at, number 22, we got Deadpool, just, <laughs> this is hilarious, there's too many fucking jokes in here, I can't, I can't think of one, god, this movie is just hilarious, um, <laughs> I like when he reads uh, the bad guy's uh, name tag. He just keeps making... Oh, Francis. <laughs> Your name is Francis? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this movie's so good. Ryan Reynolds was... Seriously, he was born to play this role. It's so funny. This guy's got the right idea, you know? So... Yeah, I love the red case, too. I had to get the red case. You already know. 22. All right. 21, Iron Man. I am Iron Man. This is what I started the MCU. Pretty much. It's the OG of the MCU, man. Come on. You gotta you gotta love it. You gotta appreciate it. Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. You gotta give that props. Give it props. Alright, we got the other stack here. Come on, come to me. Alright, so shit, I'm reading the bottom of the list. Uh, number 20 is Batman Begins. Uh, this, the first of the Christopher Nolan trilogy. This raw Batman back in the map. Where was left off Batman and Robin? Jeez. Oh, oh I cringe just thinking about that film. I mean, uh, Batman's credit card. Are you fucking serious? Oh, my God. Schwarzenegger is freeze. Welcome to Dinosaurs. The Ice Age. Enough said. That's why you should appreciate Batman Begins. Just a great take. And uh really like Liam Neeson in this film. Michael King was great as Alfred. Just a stellar cast. Oh, Morgan Freeman as Lucius Fox. Gary Oldman as Commissioner Gordon. What? I mean, you even got fucking Joffrey from Game of Thrones making a cameo. So, yeah, that one begins. Cool. All right. Number 19. Wonder Woman. That lenticular. Oh, my God. This is all day, guys. Look. Sick. Look, she goes from sexy to super sexy to, oh, I just, yeah, anyway, <laughs> Wonder Woman, Digibook, I just, I really like this film, really enjoyed it, um, Gal Gadot is Wonder Woman, just one of the best DCU films, it really is, and uh, Justice League, uh, please don't disappoint, <laughs> so yeah, Wonder Woman, my god, Gal, Gal is a goddess, Gal Gadot, Gal Gadot, Dottis or whatever. <laughs> that was so cringe. Moving on. Anyway, number 18. We got The Dark Knight Rises. What? Back to back lenticular digibooks. That's right. Look at that. Look at that. It's like. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, Bane. Um, Tom Hardy is Bane. It's great. 
uh, this is just a fantastic finish to the Dark Knight trilogy. So, uh, yeah, I don't care about it. You know, people really got their gripes. I don't care. It's, just, I don't, it's so epic. It's just so fucking epic, especially when Batman makes a comeback. I, I don't need to explain myself. Anyway, moving on, number 17 is Guardians of the Galaxy. That Rocket Raccoon slipcover. Hell yeah. Ooh, gotcha. Ooh, the best soundtrack. I mean, come and get your love. Like, the opening credit sequence is amazing. Star-Lord dancing. Just, this movie's so much fun. So rewatchable. Who would have thought? I mean, I love all these characters. They're great. I just, I, they're part of the MCU. I'm so glad that they are. Because, man, each and every one of them have their moments shine. So, yeah. Alrighty, moving now, number 16, we got a Disney hmm, uh, superhero film, The Incredibles, oh my god, The Incredibles, this movie's incredible, if you haven't seen it, you gotta watch this movie, oh my god, just the, the best uh, superhero family dynamic you will see, it <laughs> just this is so crazy, you got the father, the mother, the daughter, the son, even the fucking baby, the baby, it just, oh, I love this film. One of my favorite Pixar uh, Disney films, so rewatchable. Um, the sequel has been long overdue. Drop the sequel already, people, because I freaking love this film. Uh, yeah. All right, moving on. Number fifteen. Number fifteen. Hey, where are you? Here you are, Watchmen, people. Director's cut. Yeah. Zack Snyder just excelled in this film. Oh my God, I like the I like this more than Three Hundred. Uh, watch me, yeah, just Rorschach. Oh my God, fucking badass. He's like, oh, you're not locked up in here. You're locked up in here with me, or whatever that line he says was just fucking badass. Uh, yeah. Just... Anyway, moving on. Uh, number fourteen. There we go. Sin City, right there. I don't know. Oh, it's sexy Jessica Alba. And this is a five pack. Let me just show you. So you'll see how it looks like. And I know you guys are curious. There it is. Sin City. Man, the most graphic, novelly, most comic booky film. Like visually, holy crap. Like Robert Rodriguez and uh, Frank Miller and I uh, guess director Quentin Tarantino really brought this to life. I really enjoyed Sin City. Just an all-star cast. Bruce Willis, Benicio Del Toro, Clive Owen, Jessica Alba. Oh, so many names. Rosario Dawson. Woof. So fine. Um, yeah. Alrighty. Uh, we're number 13, guys. We're over getting there. We're going to finish this under 40, under 40 minutes. Anyway, Big Hero 6. Um, <laughs> look at this guy. How do you say no to that guy? Hi, I'm Baymax, your healthcare companion. From a scale from 1 to 10, how would you rate this list? Better be a 10, damn it. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, man, this is fucking Baymax. I, I, this is a Marvel based off of a Marvel or manga or whatever. I don't know, but it's based off Marvel. It's Disney. I love this film. It's so enjoyable. Love all the characters. Just, you know, ugh, microbots are just... So enjoyable. Uh, the ending, even the ending got me. I was like, no, Baymax. Anyway, yeah, just Baymax, the marshmallow guy, just the Michelin, the Michelin man, pretty much. Anyway, moving on, <laughs> we got number 12, and I don't have it yet. Why? Because I just recently saw it, and it was amazing. And that is right here, right here Thor Ragnarok. This movie fucking rocked my socks off. I mean, it was so damn good. I would gladly take the melt stick and just hit myself with it. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Uh, we need a spin-off Korg movie. I'm just saying. Yeah, make that happen. Taika Waititi. Anyway, yeah. Thor Ragnarok, so much fun. Hulk, Loki. Uh, check out my review about it. You you, are, you would find out how much I really appreciate it. Love this song. I don't think it will be this high on the list. But yes, it is. It's high enough. It's number 12. So they did something right. Anyway, moving on. Number 11, X2, X-Men United. My God, this, this film really holds up. Brian Singer really did good here. Um, made me like Wolverine even more. Hugh Jackman's portrayal continues to impress. 
stellar cast. I like the we got more of the mutants. We got an awesome sequence with Colossus. What? Oh, that shit! That shit was so crazy when we first see him, and then the the, the that raid sequence in the school was nuts. Uh, William Stryker was just scary ass human villain, and that sequence with Nightcrawler. What? Nightcrawler, this fucker right here, man. And the White House just whooping ass. Oh my god, that that sequence just blew me away. Still holds up. And we, of course, you know we were gonna do this. Ah, I love these metal packs. Anyway, uh, moving on, moving on, moving on. We are at the top ten, guys. We're here. We made it. Thank you for being patient. All right, let's see if we can do this in forty minutes. All right. Number ten. Batman, Mask of the Phantasm, the only DVD here, because <laughs> I have to upgrade the Blu-ray, but just love the Batman anime series style, Mark Hamill is the Joker, just a um, very tragic tale, one of the most deepest Batman films you will ever see, seriously, check this out if you haven't, just great, alright, number 9, I'm out of breath here guys, <laughs> number 9 is V for Vanetta, remember, remember, the 5th of November. Just, just blew my mind. Like when I first watched it, I was mixed. When I watched it the second time, I, I loved it. The third time, I loved it even more. And just the more I think about it, the more I like it. It's just so different and unique. And just V for Vendetta, people. Natalie Portman's best performance, and he will be even, even though he's under the mask the whole time. The guy forced mask is just, just a great cautionary tale about our government. Seriously, watch it, government. Yeah, government conspiracies. Ooh. Anyway, um, yeah, number eight. Number eight, Spider-Man 2. This is my ideal Spider-Man. Always will be. Just so epic when I first watched it. It's still epic to this day. Holds up well. Doc Ock as the villain. Everything was just more grand scale work. And J. Jonah Jameson still being J. Jonah Jameson. Parker, where you been at? Oh, that's right. You're rehired. I need you. It <laughs> just J.K. Simmons kills it. Uh, yeah, so for that alone, Spider-Man 2 is number 8. You know. uh, go here. Yeah. Alright, we're almost done, guys. We're almost there. Uh, number 7. I didn't think this would be number 7, but, oh, man, it's just such a mesmerizing, haunting film. Uh, the Crow. The Crow. Yes. Brandon Lee's The Crow, my God. It's just so tragic what happened to him on set. He died. But man, his legacy lives on through this film. It's so haunting. It's like this film um, really encapsulates his final moments. It's weird. It's just about death and pain and resurrection and just, oh my God, time loss, your loved ones, losing your loved ones just can't rain all the time. I, oh my God. I love really dark. This is probably the darkest uh, comic book based film and I don't think they can do a remake justice. I don't see how they can. I just all I see is Brandon Lee. This is Brandon Lee's movie, The Crow. It's just so haunting. Like I said, really is. Uh, that church sequence towards the end, man, just beautifully shot with the rain. And they're fighting on the roof. Go, oh my God, this movie is so damn good. Anyway, moving on. Number six, The Avengers. Avengers Assemble, puny god. <laughs> oh, man, so enjoyable, so rewatchable. My most rewatched uh, MCU film, seriously. This When this came out, it, we're like, we, we made it, guys. We made it. Just high five all your nerd buddies. We finally made it. Anything is possible from here on out because we got the all star team up. We got Cap, uh, Iron Man, Thor, and Hulk. Uh, Mark Ruffalo's Hulk really shined. I uh, just love this film. Yeah, all right. Oh my god, we're here. The top five. We're going to hit the 40 minute mark. Fuck it. Here we go. Here we go. Number five, X-Men Days of Future Past. My god, this film, Ryan Singer came back in a huge way, combining the past and the future. Literally, just God uh, assembling the most epic cast. You got the original young... We have portrayal of the actors here. We got James McAvoy. We got Michael Fassbender. I love the Quicksilver a sequence here. What? It just, it just, it works so wonderfully. 
The Sentinels were scary ass fucking villains. Just a force to be reckoned with. And uh, yeah, just, man, this fucking film, man. This fucking film hits you, man, with the feels. Everything was at stake. This is the most high stakes a comic book film ever. You, like, you, everything is writing. Like, the future is literally on the line. It's just, man, really enjoyed this one. Just a stellar cast. Every character has a moment to shine. You know, Wolverine, everybody. You just, Michael Fassbender as Magneto. My God, I can't praise the this dude enough. Anyway. Oh, fuck. Then to my steelbook. No, I think it'll be fine. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> moving on. Okay, so that was number four. Number quattro. Now we got... Or was it? No, that was number five. Sorry. See, I'm already so I'm screwing up. Number four now is Silver War. This is awesome. Steelbook. The airport sequence, you already know. Uh, the reveal of Bucky Barnes, the Winter Soldier, what he did to Iron Man's parents. Oh my god, everything just worked. The introduction of Black Panther, the introduction of Spider-Man. Everything worked. MCU could pull anything off. It just, oh my god, it's just an all-star battle royale here. It's just so fucking epic. Uh, yeah, anyway. Now we get to the top three, guys. The top three and I knew, just making this list, I knew these three films were going to be in my top three. I already knew. They're my most rewatched. Then it's just, this is what I think about. These three films is what I think about every time I think about a comic book film. Number three is Cat America, The Winter Soldier. With Nick Fury, motherfucker, on the cover. <laughs> so, nice shot of the team right there. Just, you know, that sequence with Winter Soldier. Come on, guys. Just one of the best action sequences you'll see just oh my god the combination of like a spy thriller and a marvel comic book film what just hydra taking over oh man that was just so good so good to watch i mean yeah the best mcu film right here all right guys we made it number two is the dark knight what no no you didn't yes i did and th believe me this was number one it would have been so predictable I just say the number one Dark Knight. Believe me, I've been doing that for years. For years. The Dark Knight. Dark Knight. Nothing can top the Dark Knight. And you know what? For the time being, I thought that was true. Until a film came out this year and you'll see it. But nonetheless, this is still a masterpiece. Just you already know. I just praise this film enough. This is my fucking baby. This is my number one Blu-ray. <laughs> The OG, the first Blu-ray buy ever. Come on. And Heath Ledger's a joker. I mean, why so serious? You know, just Dark Knight. Come on. Batman is life, people. Anyway. And number one. Logan. Just want to play some Johnny Cash right now. Every time I fucking think about this film. I hurt myself today. Yeah, anyway, yeah, from that trailer, I just, I was sold, this did not disappoint, so emotionally moving, god, just, mm. it's better to be nominated, people, Academy Awards, make it happen, Logan for Best Picture, the, there's no film that I've seen this year that, that, that competes against Logan, maybe Star Wars The Last Jedi, we'll see, but, Logan's still the reigning champion this year, and of all comic book films, because, this film is not a superhero film or a comic book film. This is about one man's journey of redemption. I mean, I love all the performances. Hugh Jackman has been playing Wolverine for 17 years. And my God, what a beautiful send-off. Daphne Keene as X-23. And of course, the great Patrick Stewart as Professor X. I just oh, love it. It's a masterpiece. 10 out of 10. Fucking 100 out of 1,000. Uh, if that's even possible. I, I don't know. But yeah, it's the best. It's the fucking best. I don't care what you say. It's D.O.G. It's the best. Okay? So, yeah, that's it. Holy crap. 44 minutes in, guys. We made it. <sighs> this is going to be a pain in the ass to edit. But fuck it. I'll do it. Anyway, uh, post your comments. What did you think about my top 50 list? Is it better than Rotten Tomatoes? Anything is better than Rotten Tomatoes. Because I know they did it, the fucking top 50 list. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> post your comments. Uh, let me know what you thought about my ranking. Um, what's your top 10? What's your top 5? 
What's your top 20? What's your top 50? Top 100? Fuck it. Put it in the comments. And let me know. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Catch you in the next one.